How's it going guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and let's say you don't want to spend 200 bucks on a Galaxy S3 or 300 bucks or even more on a Galaxy Note 2. Well, there are some mid-range devices that have some pretty decent specifications that you should take a look at. One of those is the Samsung Galaxy Rugby Pro. It's a 4G LTE device on AT&T and it's packing some pretty decent specifications. One. And two, it's got a rugged build, so for you that are in construction, perhaps you're just hard on your phone, this could be an awesome device for you or a loved one in your life. Let's take a look at it in the full review, but first, special thanks to our partners at Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices like this that we take, we give around, turn around rather, and give to you on the Instant Win game at instantwin.phonedog.com. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out working, they'll help you set up your email, your web, contact settings, camera settings, and more. So when you walk out the door with the Galaxy Rugby Pro, you're good to go at Best Buy Mobile. Let's take a look. Is this the ultimate device to get? Or maybe you should splurge a little bit and get the Galaxy S3 or the Galaxy Note 2 or perhaps even the One X Plus, something like that, the Lumia 920 on AT&T when it comes out. We'll find out in the full review, which starts right now. Another day, another Android phone. But the good thing about Android devices, at least in comparison to Windows Phone and to a far less extent iOS, is the fact that there really is something for everybody. This is the case right here. This is the Samsung Galaxy Rugby Pro, and I know the name is a mouthful, but it's packing some nice specs on AT&T, and it's a little bit more rugged for those people that have those jobs where, you know what, the iPhone doesn't work, the Galaxy S3 doesn't work because they're too fragile in terms of devices. They break too easily. For somebody that needs a, mil uh, excuse me, a military specification phone, this could be a perfect device. It's packing a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S4 Plus CPU MSM 8960. It's got a 4-inch display uh, with 480 by 800 pixels. On the back you get a camera with 5 megapixels with 1080p HD video recording and on the front you've got three capacitive buttons here, menu, home and back and of course you're running Android 4.0 also known as Ice Cream Sandwich with TouchWiz user interface and you pull a lot of those nature effects from the Galaxy S3 and from the Galaxy Note 2 over onto this device. So you'll notice for example if you can hear that you can hear the nature effects and little, the little uh, noises and some of the effects, the animations, come over from the Galaxy S3 and the Galaxy Note 2. That said, it doesn't have the same full-blown TouchWiz appearance, at least when it comes to the nature effects that the Galaxy S3 and Galaxy Note have. That said, a 1.3 megapixel front-facing camera over here, one gigabyte of RAM, so it's packing a pretty decent specifications list, along with a 1,850 milliamp hour battery that's encased in this pretty hard shell with a physical uh, screw here, if you will, or not screw, but a little uh, doohickey. We're going to refer to it as a doohickey uh, on this video. A little thing that, uh, that keeps it locked and keeps it sealed on the sides. This does meet military specifications for dust, wind, shock, vibrations, all that stuff. Uh, sand, certain amount of sand, and more military 810 specifications. But otherwise, a pretty well-spec device with a 4-inch display. So for those people that think 4.5 inches is too big, for those people that think 4.8 is killing it, for those that think 5.5, well, that's just a darn tablet. 4 inches can be perfect for a lot of people. Now, out of the gate here, very similar look and feel to what we've seen and worked with on the Galaxy S3 in a lot of ways. Both TouchWiz, obviously, though it's without some of the nature elements, and then, of course, Android 4.0. Out of the gate, you get Amazon Kindle, AT&T Code Scanner, Family map, locker, navigator, smart Wi-Fi, and then some more AT&T stuff over on the other side. Along with device help, you get live TV, my AT&T, YP Mobile, and then quick light for the front-facing camera as well. And of course, a couple of things that I've installed. Now, I like the way TouchWiz looks. I think they've really refined their user interface. If we go back to like the TouchWiz 3.0 days, it was a terrible user interface. It was kind of back to where LG is now in a lot of ways with their current user interface. It's not terrible by any means. LG's is relatively decent, but in comparison to the more mature operating systems or user interfaces at that, since TouchWiz, Motorola's UI, it kind of pales in comparison and still has some catching up to do. I think they've gotten to a point with this one where it's really refined. It works well with Ice Cream Sandwich, and it's really one of those user interfaces where people that are you know used to devices, high-end techies, and then those people that aren't used to devices, perhaps a first-time smartphone buyer, can find a lot to like in this device. So it's a little bit of something for everybody. Now the notifications bar here, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, sound, screen rotation, then you can scroll over to access some shortcuts. Now, unfortunately, unlike the Optimus G, which is available on AT&T and Sprint in the United States, you don't get the ability over here to customize your notifications bar. So you don't get that ability, for example, to move GPS from here to here, from Wi-Fi to the other screen, or from screen rotation over to the far left-hand side, but you do get a wealth of shortcuts up in the top along with your settings button, and then, of course, an area to customize screen brightness from the actual notifications bar right here. So we'll go into settings and take a look 
and you can see wireless and network device shortcuts and you get a lot of the same features here customizable key for example on the side I can set this to oh, let's say Gmail you know what I send and receive a lot of emails and I can set this customizable key over here so when I click on it and hold Gmail opens up just like that so I've got that shortcut button I've got a volume rocker over here on the left side on the right side I've got a power button 3.5 millimeter headphone jack at the top which is encased in this little thing keep water out encased in a little seal if you will and at the bottom I have a micro USB charging port also encased in a full seal down there. So that keeps both of those ports protected from water and meets that military specification. Now again, physical buttons down here, you've got menu, home, and then search, or menu, home, and back, excuse me, when you press and hold menu, or home rather, you can get your task manager. Let me just say that all over again because I kind of butchered that one. Menu, home, and back, and then pressing and holding menu, or pressing and holding home rather, butchered, butchered it again. Home will get you your task manager where you can easily remove those applications and of course go into task manager here and access RAM and clear the memory, do some things like that. Now let's take a look at messaging on this device because again, I think this is going to be great for those people. You know what? They don't want to shell out, whatever the case may be, they don't want to shell out the money for the Galaxy S3. Maybe the Galaxy S3 is too big for them. Maybe they just don't like the way it looks. Perhaps they need something more rugged. Whatever your use case may be, this is a device that has pretty decent power and it's really nice to see devices like this where you get a pretty decent feature set and you don't have to spend 200 bucks. So it's not one of those things anymore where if you don't spend two or 300 bucks on your device, you get a crappy Android phone. You get a pretty decent Android phone even at the $50 price tier or the $100 price tier relatively easily. So messaging here, and you do have some nice little shortcuts. I can go in here, for example, go to settings. I can change my background style just like I can on the Galaxy S3. And the Note 2, as you can see, I've kind of already done here, along with the bubble style. So I can go in here and say the, uh, the quick round fox is ready for dinner. And totally misspelled all of that. Ready for dinner. And you can see portrait to landscape transitions relatively fast here. That dual core Snapdragon S4 CPU working relatively fast. And of course, the keyboard is decent. Now, 4-inch display may be the sweet spot for some people, but those coming from a 4.3 or a 4.5 or whatever the case may be, 5, 5.3, 5.5, may find this to be a little bit too small. That said, in landscape mode, it's relatively decent. Now, out of the gate, you do get an input method here of Samsung keyboard and, of course, Google Voice typing, but there are a plethora of options available in the Google Play Store. Swift key, there are a couple of free options, a lot of different choices for depending on what keyboard you like on your individual device. But you get a lot of customization here. And of course, while this stays wide on the background, this is kind of an AT&T customization to Samsung devices. You'll notice that on a lot of them, they remain white here in the background for whatever reason. You can see once you get in here and you send the message, you can customize, of course, the way the bubbles look and the way that the background looks. So that's always a nice little touch. AT&T 4G LTE on this device. So again, bringing 4G LTE to a cheaper price point. We'll load up phonedog.com and you can see some minor differences to the browser here with a little bar down here at the bottom that gives you a shortcut options for Facebook. Recommended, of course, liking it, tweeting, sharing, and what's popular. And for the most part, 4G LTE has worked incredibly well in the Dallas area. I haven't seen really any areas where it doesn't work well. And then of course, it's signing in. I don't know why it's taking so long to sign in. This could be the first time I've seen an issue uh, with data, but let's see. There are two new toolbar locations available. We'll take a look. News, sports, entertainment, settings, and of course, add more down here. So these browser bar thing is an AT&T thing. The AT&T browser bar is what they're calling it. I can add a button if I want to. Add phone dog down here to the bottom of the bar, and you can see it goes over with the three dots to show me that I've got three different screens, and I can easily access phone dog via a shortcut from the bottom. Now, pinch to zoom appears to be, or usually it's relatively responsive, it's kind of lagging right now, but let's take a look here again and see what we can do. Let's wait for it to focus in, or wait for it to load up here. Yeah, it seems to be having some issues with pinch to zoom right now, but overall, typically it's been pretty responsive. I don't know, it's performing terribly right now, but let's take a look here and see what we can do to get this fixed. Let's go to the very top and see if we can reload the page perhaps, because that is kind of interesting that it's causing, or having that issue rather. And of course, you can see, there we go, that's a little bit better. That's what I've seen with the device. I don't know why, a little random fluke there, sorry about that. Don't consider that to be uh, the end-all, be-all browser test, or be-all, end-all rather, browser test. But you know, for the most part, I found it to be relatively responsive. I'm not sure why it's having these issues right now. But uh, it seems to be an issue in the browser. Again, you can also download Chrome as a third-party browser from Google Play, and I do find it to be incredibly responsive. That said, I'm not sure why it's having so many issues uh, over here right now, but 
whatever. That's kind of interesting. In part two, we'll talk about speed test, quadrant standard, and more as well as the camera. So stay tuned for all of those exciting features on the Samsung Galaxy Rugby Pro on PhoneDog.com.